All right, guys. I am live, baby. This is heaven help us. Listen, I know um I gave y'all a um a little uh teaser earlier with Quad um and I wanted to go live today because so many people asked me to actually um review different shows. I'm gonna give y'all a second to get in, but you know what? I don't watch a lot of reality TV. I watch our show and I have them tuned in to Marriage to Medicine LA, so I know a little bit about that. So I can actually review that show. Um, <clears throat> and what I'll do is, I kind of like this show, so I'm going to actually review that show. And I actually know the ladies, and I know what I'm talking about. So I like to talk about stuff. I kind of think I know what I'm talking about. And um, I'm going to start with Marriage to Medicine LA. And if y'all got any questions, y'all just chime in, okay? I know I was running a little late, baby, because you know mom would go to work, you know. I be working. Um, smiles by Dr. Heavenly, but I do answer relationship questions. I am a certified relationship coach. If you can zoom in, there's my certification right there. So if you don't have any questions, it is right there. Okay. Now we got Miss Laura. She's going to be helping me with my live a little bit here. And then I think Halo is going to tune in as well and help me answer some of the questions. Halo, you there? I don't know how to chime you in, girl, but I know how my, my daughter's over there helping me. Now, so... What y'all want to talk about first? Marriage to Medicine LA. Okay, let's go to it. Marriage to Medicine LA is a, a spinoff from Marriage to Medicine Atlanta. And I know that um, Atlanta had another spinoff. I think it was in Houston. Um, it didn't do well. I never watched it, honestly. But I think myself and others told production, y'all should have had us go to Houston to introduce the ladies, okay? So I guess, you know, trial and error, whatever, whatever. It made a whole lot of sense. So, um... So many people have said it. I guess um, somebody listened to us and they decided to send some of the ladies to um, L.A. So I think that Married to Medicine wants to be a big franchise. I've heard of Houston. I've heard of Miami. Now they got L.A. So I think it might be more difficult to find doctors to do reality TV because they just have so much more to lose. You know, I mean, everybody got stuff to lose. But, you know, a lot of people that are doctors went to school a very long time and they feel like, it may be a negative impact on their practice. Um, so let's get into it. Marriage to Medicine LA. Um, you know, Miss Quad, everybody was talking about Miss Quad, her whole divorce. Um, her and Greg actually had a big, um, I'm going to say blow up at Married to Medicine on our reunion show. And um, it was actually the most watched episode ever on, not maybe not ever, but definitely on the season of Marriage to Medicine, the last episode of the reunion. If y'all watch it, y'all go back and watch it. If you didn't, you know it was explosive. So in um, the start night of Marriage to Medicine LA, what we did was we got with Quad. We knew she was in a place where, I'm not going to say bitter, but probably um, in a place that she probably wasn't feeling her best. Because, you know, anytime you get married, you get married forever. Um, and everybody has their ups and downs in marriage. I know I laugh and joke it all the time and talk about marriage, but it's, it ain't difficult all the time, but it ain't as hard as these tricks make it seem if you're with the right person. Um, so we got together, we all got to, you know, drinking and eating and stuff like that. And, um, we're asking Quad, what can we do to make you feel better? Cause she had a real rough season. It was a lot going on. If y'all watch it, go back and watch it. But, um, uh, long story short, we decided to go to LA. Now, Contessa... I know Dr. Contessa, um, she actually had a best friend in L.A., Bridget, who actually hosts the whole thing. So we actually went over there. Her name, oh, Britton. I'm so, oh, God. I've been calling that woman Bridget so much. Her name is Britton. I really like Britton. Don't get me wrong. I like Britton. My, thank you, Laura, for correcting me. Britton. We actually went to uh, L.A., and Britton actually greeted us there. We were at the um, airport, and she greeted us with that, uh, what's the kind of truck that is? A uh, Wrangler, what? Uh, the Jeep, Jeep, uh, whatever it is. Jeep, whatever, with no doors. Anyway, I wasn't trying to be funny. My son got that same truck. I just like doors, okay? So we actually had a lot of fun. We were um actually joning back and forth. Um, So I'm going to break the ladies down because it's been two episodes. And I think I was I was in b b the first two. The third one, I'm not sure if I'm in it or not. But um, I think that we did a great transition. Um, So I think the ladies got it from here. I think they got, I think they got something cute going on. And I hate to keep, I hate to compare Atlanta to L.A., but you know it's going to be comparisons. That's just what people do. So let's break it down. We started with Britain. 
I said her name? Brit Britain. Britain. Okay, Britain is um biracial. Um she actually looks white, but she acts black. Um I love her. I she seemed like she was a non-bothered person. She seemed like Things didn't get up under her skin. We asked her some difficult questions like you knew we were going to. Um, we asked her about her marriage. We asked her what did she think about infidelity, this thing, the other thing. And she has an interesting dynamic of her family. It's not traditional. And who's to say what's right or wrong? Hey, y'all live how y'all want to, okay? I'm going to tell y'all what it is and what's going on with people's marriages. And I'm going to tell you what I think about it. Hell, I don't know them. Fire acts. I need some eyelashes. Um, she's an actress, and uh, she's been. Um, she went to ask, acting school with Debbie Allen. She's um, been on um, Star, I think, and I, um, she she has a place on a show called Honey or whatever. The thing I loved about Asha was she was saying that it was so difficult for her to find a part. Um, Acting, you know, for a black woman, it's hard to find parts. I mean, she did some parts on reality TV, obviously, but um, to find a real part. Um, acting so she actually started her own um, programs and um, she's building her own network or whatever she's doing she's actually building um, places where she can act on it so I thought that was good you know if you can't find a table you make your own so Asha was cool she invited us to her party um, two year anniversary now I know uh, we went to the party I think I mean uh, was it Simone that said that you shouldn't celebrate it was two years and was laughing at the two years and they've been married 22 years and saying you shouldn't really celebrate two years. I feel like, you know what, I celebrate often. I celebrate the first month if I want to, you know. Um, but everybody a little bit different in how they do things. Uh, you want me to be messy? I think you should celebrate every year. I do. Um, so I didn't agree with that. Um, secondly... Um, Asha brought us outfits to go, you know what I mean? I like my outfit, um, I didn't like some of the others, or whatever. But I thought we had a good time, we joned back and forth, whatever, whatever. Um, I think the next person y'all were introduced to was Dr. Imani. Dr. Imani, I'm going to go into their relationships in a second, but I'm going to break them down because it's the first time y'all heard of these people, okay? Imani is the chick that don't have no hair, okay? She's the bald-headed chick. We loved her. Honestly, it was something regal about this woman. Um, she's greater than six foot tall, body bad to the bone. Um, I think she got breasts. I think in L.A. they do a lot of that breast stuff and tea stuff. They really just into their image, which is good. You know, I think we can learn something from them or whatever. Um, she's a uh, psychiatrist. Um those are needed. We know that. Everybody needs to see somebody at some point in their life. Um, but Imani, I really liked her. You know why I liked her? Because she was confident. You know, I'm going to come in and I'm going to play with you. I'm going to join with you. I'm going to haze you a little bit, if you will. Um, Imani wasn't bothered by me, and I love that. Um, she was very confident. She laughed at my jokes. She kind of understood me. You know, and I don't mean no harm. I just be playing. But some people take it real seriously. And some people feel like you can't meet people like that. But if you're on reality TV, you got to meet people the way you meet them. And make it interesting. So I think I do a good job of doing that. Um, I really liked Imani. Um, I love that she was bald. I, I, I know I can't be bald, but I mean, it's, it works for her. Um, I think her husband. Her husband is actually a musician. He um had a song or something, the group portrait or whatever. I really didn't remember portrait. But I think I remember the song. If you sing it to me, I can tell you what it was. But um, her husband was in a group called Portrait, which was all well and good. Okay, so who else is it? I got Britton. I got Dr. Imani. I talked about Asha. Okay, the third lady I met was Jasmine. Now, I hate to compare people on reality TV, but I, um, I'm going to have to. Jasmine is who Toya aspires to be. I'm going to just put it out there. Jasmine really got it. Okay, Jasmine got that six, eight million dollar house. Um, Jasmine has about $2 million worth of cars. Um, she got a Bentley, a Ferrari, uh, something, something, something. So Jasmine got it going on, but the problem with Jasmine was, I didn't, and it ain't none of my damn business, but I'm just going to put it out there. How the hell are they making their money? Because her husband is a psychiatrist. Now, it would have been easy on us if Jasmine would have said, yes, my husband's psychiatrist, but he come from money. Um, I think uh, Dr. Imani's mother has a lot of money. I think she owns her own network or whatever, so they got a lot of money over there. She never did really say what the man did. So, being a psychiatrist, we knew Quad's husband was a psychiatrist. Dr. Imani's psychiatrist don't, they make all right, but they don't make that great of money to have no $8 million house. We know that. To have no $2 million worth of car. So, that was the interesting thing about Jasmine. Beautiful girl. I mean, she got her nose done. Looked like to me. I ain't, you know, I don't know what she had done, but it looked like to me. She got her breast done. 
girl snatched. I always asked her when I was with her, how you keep, how you stay so skinny? She said, all she eat is egg whites and she works out two to three hours a day. Okay, man. I mean, that's what I'm saying. Toya's inspiring to be her because she don't do nothing, but she really got money. She really do look like money. And, um, she really ain't got shit to do. I mean, she said she got a business or whatever, but I think that was some BS anyway. But, um, Jasmine came off as a toy, kind of like... I ain't gonna say a dinghy, but you know, not the not the brightest chick on the block or whatever, but she seemed really cool. Um, who was the next girl? Uh Jasmine. Then I'm gonna forget somebody because these people really weren't that memorable to me. Um, there was the messy chick. They compared her to me. They said she looked like me, she looked like my daughter grown up, whatever. Her name is um Shanique. Shanique, um, um, I didn't understand her story. What they told me was that her husband is a physician. He's an um, urgent care doctor. He works in the urgent care, so he's internal medicine. Real love dude. You know, I came in there and, you know, we had a little fun with him. We called him Little Daddy because he was little. But he was really, really cool, honestly. And he had a cane, some quad through and cane, so we called him Little Dude, Little Daddy Kane. Now, Shanique met this dude. Now, I'm going to tell you what I heard. Now, you know, this is all hearsay, so, you know, whatever. But they said she was a waitress. And she met Lil Daddy. Lil Daddy can't be 4'2". He's, I'm serious, he's not 4'2". Four, four he's real short. Like, not playing. You know, there's a lot of dudes out there that's 5'4". You know, my husband 5'8". Um, it's just short dudes out there. 5'8 is short, but it ain't that short. This dude is 4'2", four, 4'4". Four, four, somewhere in there. I mean, I'm a good foot taller than him, and I'm 5'4". But anyway, he was a real cool dude. He was outgoing. He was whatever. But they gonna name him to be the love... Peter of the show, because he all, he intricately involved, he's all in the mess, you know, and they ain't just, you know, I, I ain't for that, I really liked him, I thought he was really cool, but I, 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 I did not like that he was, he is all up in the women mess, but anyway, Shanique, that's her, they say she looked like me, she looked like my daughter, whatever, whatever, I think she's a cute girl, so I ain't mad that they said that, um, she didn't seem... I mean, she seemed brighter than Jasmine, but my, not much. Um, she was a waitress. But, you know, these chicks smart enough to get them a doctor husband, so I ain't going to be mad at them, Shanique and uh, Jasmine. I think they friends. Okay, then they got another doctor chick. Her name is Noelle. I don't know too much about Noelle. I think she's a family medicine doctor, and she does yoga. Anyway, enough about them. Okay, so the story goes, we introduced them. We have a good time. I mean, we had a really good time over there. Me and Quad got to Jonah. Don't worry, me and Quad cool. I hope we don't ever fall out because I don't want to fall out. But we've been joning on each other pretty hard. She said, I wear Spanx. I do wear Spanx, hell. I had to hold all this stuff together. She said I had knee knocker breasts. My, my breasts ain't knee knocker, but you know. I'm a woman of a certain age, hell. You know, I'm doing pretty good. Um, So... I'm going to put two in the one. I thought that the Married to Medicine LA, the way we introduced them was excellent. I felt like they should have did that with Houston, but Houston was born. They had a mixed crowd. I think the key to this is to keep it all black cast because I guess, you know, when you're dealing with other people, you know, you're Joan and you're talking about people or whatever, and you don't want that race, racial tension like, did I say the wrong stuff? Did I call it the wrong thing? That's the element that we just, I wouldn't want, you know, and um, saying the wrong thing. So, um, yeah. So anyway, the story started out, they asked me why the hell was I on the second episode. True thing, true tea is what y'all say. True tea, I was in I was in LA um, for a dental CE course. You know, I take a lot of dental CE classes. Dentistry is my passion. I really love it. And I'm trying to do the, I'm, you know, I'm trying to get the best, best product at the best price, you know. And the thing about dentistry is different. Y'all looking at certain things like these veneers, these luminaires, these crowns, and it's a different level to them. So if you look at some of them, you're saying, okay, they don't look like this. No, this is the Cadillac. This is the Bentley. And this is the Maybach up here. Okay. You got choices based on your in, well, on your finances on what you can get. But I try to give people the option of everything. Okay, your insurance is going to pay for this base metal. Okay, this right here is uh, porcelain fused uh, zirconium. This is porcelain fused gold. All of them look different. This is stacked. This is not stacked. This is uh, it's different kinds of crowns. Anyway, long story short, I know that LA is very um, very into looks. They into getting their teeth done, their hair done, their butt done, their breast done, or whatever. So they have some of the best cosmetic dentistry dentistry in America. So where would I go to um, learn cosmetic dentistry? It was LA? So I'm in LA. Trust me, they found out I was there. Okay, so I ain't really push myself up on there. But if you're gonna tell me, you know, do me, you know, I'm gonna come. But anyway, long story short, I walked up in some mess. 
okay? I was just like, you know what? I could stay in Atlanta if I could. I got to deal with messy. It was some mess. And I'm trying not to go ahead of the story because y'all just on episode two. But it was a lot of stuff that did not make no damn sense. First of all, we get to the party. First of all, I go to party with Asha and, and Imani. We, me and Dr. Imani have a real bond. I like Asha too. You know, I like all the chicks, whatever. I don't even know these hoes like that, but I like them. And we got there riding, and they just was talking about a lot of different things. They were saying they called me Dr. Hell, whatever. I ain't did nothing to these women or whatever. But uh, I guess maybe they heard about me anyway. So anyway, we had a good time. I was telling my man my business, and I do. I just talk about other people's business, but I try to tend to mine. Anyway, so I was like, you know what? I'm going to go here, and I'm going to let them do what they do. Um... And I'm going to try to be quiet because, you know what I'm saying? I don't really know them like that. I don't know what's going on. I walk up, it's a mess. It was just like the, uh, Asha's husband's ex, her name was Anissa, was at the party. And Shanique invited the girl saying that she was her husband, uh, Lil Daddy. His name is Robert. Lil Daddy's uh, best friend, a good friend. They go on vacation together. Now, the problem I had with that, the reason that I don't believe that all the way this girl, Anissa, was beautiful. You know what I'm saying? And I grade, I grade women pretty hard. She was, you know, she was, she, you know, we could do her teeth, but you know, everybody got a little flaw. Anissa was beautiful. And, you know, I said she was a highly specialized physician, but when I met her, I think she said she did anesthesia or something. But anyway, come to find out she's um, internal medicine, which ain't that highly specialized. But beautiful girl. She looked Creole, whatever, whatever. So, I guess they were talking about the girl being there, Anissa, Dr. Anissa. And she was Asha's husband, Larry's ex. Okay, so what? Okay, so what? Okay, the ex is there. Asha is the one that just celebrated her husband for two years, whatever, whatever. And they seem pretty happy. My problem with the whole thing was Asha got hot and bothered. Maybe because we was on TV and it was just like, okay, you know, when you first start a show, you don't know what to expect. You paranoid, why is this bitch here, whatever, whatever. So anyway, I get it. Um... What I didn't get was why she got so mad at Shanique. Because when y'all realize it wasn't, to me it wasn't that bad. This is girl, husband, best friend. He had a party. Y'all know she had a party. Why you mad? The problem I had with was they was talking about the damn girl all the whole time. And nobody talked to the ex. Like they talking about it, but they not talking to her. You know I'm the type of person. Listen, if she there and y'all talking about her, bring her to the table. Where she at? Bring her. So I guess I stepped out of my lane maybe, and ask them to find the girl. Is she there? Where she at? I want to see her. Met the girl. Problem with the girl was she was one of them old nice, nasty tricks. You know, I, I game recognized game, and I'm a woman and I understand what it is. She gets there. Yes, me and Larry had a relationship. You don't use my husband's name like that. You don't say, oh, me and Damon. No. You say Dr. Damon, Dr. whatever the hell their last name is, Dr. Johnson, whatever it is. Dr. Johnson, yeah, I know him. No, this girl walks up, yes, me and Larry was in a relationship or whatever, whatever. First of all, she rubbed me the wrong way. You know, she's pretty, you know, I ain't mad, you know, a doctor. I love it, okay? I love a powerful black woman, positive black woman. But don't come up in here knowing you know you the ex of this girl right here because you knew. And he gonna say, oh, no, um, me and Larry was in a relationship. So nobody really was saying that to the chick. So that's why I was felt like I need to ask this chick some questions. How long you been knowing Larry? What's going on? Are you still uh, talking to Larry? Oh, no, I haven't talked to Larry in a while. Oh, no, no, no. She doing all that. You know, I don't like chicks like that. You know what I'm saying? She was real cool. Looked like she was unbothered. I loved it. But you know them nice, nasty chicks, okay? Why was you there? And why are you talking about Larry like this if you don't want Larry? Then I asked her, are you single? Because, bitch, you know, you coming out here, this lady husband, do you have a man? Where your man at? Is, is he here? Because that would help me out a whole lot. This trick says, I'm single like a dollar bill. Okay, hell no. Hell no. You single like a dollar bill. Okay. Do you still have feelings for Larry? They was like, damn, Heavenly, why are you asking? Because she talking about she's single like a dollar bill. This woman flew from Howard University in a relationship with this man, was in a relationship with that man for some years. I think she had a baby, but she had a baby by somebody else. But she flew from D.C. all the way to California to be with this man, used to live with him, had a long-lasting, serious relationship. Now she back over here saying she's somebody's friend and she know the girl going to be there. Anyway, long story, I don't like no mess. But anyway, I was like, Asha, you need to go talk to the girl. Anyway, 
I should act like she didn't want to talk to the girl. I ain't going to tell y'all what happened next because maybe they'll show it on the season because they did cut that thing off and a lot more happened. So maybe they'll show it. But I really, y'all could say I was being messy. Maybe I was. Hell, I don't care. Hell, I, you know, if a person come in, I don't even know these chicks like that. But if you're going to talk to her, bring her to the table so she could say her piece and I let her. And I felt like I'm a, I should, should talk to her. Anyway. Long story short, I'm a certified relationship coach, so let me break down these relationships, right? I don't know these people but a little bit, but I got a great power of discernment, and I have a great um, first-time opinion. These are just my opinions that ain't, you know, I don't know, but watch it come to pass, okay? This is their first season, if they get a second season, and I think they will, because the show is cute. It really is. I think I liked how we introduced them, so we gave them a fighting chance, and then... They didn't really want to interact, but I made them. So they got at least two of them. got eight episodes total. We done pushed them through two of them. And pretty much they'll probably, um, you know how they do flashbacks to the previous episodes. So they're going to get a good two, three, four episodes. And now it looked like they got some mess because I should look like she pissed. But I don't know why she pissed. I mean, no, I was mad when people said they had receipts on my husband. I was, so I get it. And then I was also mad because they also said I was cheating. So that made me even more angry. But... This girl ain't seen your husband in two years. Y'all celebrated y'all two-year anniversary. Now, if you look at the previews, they say there was some overlap in the relationship. But hell, is a damn. You know what I'm saying? There's overlap while you're married. So hell, if there was some overlap while you were dating, forget about it. But I'm going to go into the relationships. Okay, we're going to start with Britain. Britain's husband all the way in Florida. Okay, we did get to see her husband on the second episode. Mac. I think his name is Mac. Matt cute, you know what I'm saying? He look good, okay. Um, Brittany is a pretty lady. Like she look white, but she act black. Let me say about their relationship. I didn't see no chemistry. I didn't see any chemistry. It seemed like a, a arranged marriage. It seemed like an arranged arrangement. They didn't seem like they were that tight to me. I'm just sorry. They just looked like they were two beautiful people, but they probably were pushed together. Contestants say she other contestants say she knew her. He was um. Her husband's best friend, Scott's best friend, and, she, and Britain was her best friend. To me, look like, I mean, I ain't being messy or nothing, but look like Contessa and Britain probably, you know, I ain't going to say that. But they look like they had a strong relationship. She kept saying her best friend was her soulmate. I don't know. You know, I ain't messy or nothing, but my soulmate is my man, so you can take that how you want to take it. But to me, Britain wasn't into her man. That's what I saw. I saw a relationship like, okay, she the breadwinner. He's there. They got two kids. The man don't want to take care of damn kids, but what man do? Most men do not want to take care of no damn kids, but it was very obvious there was some resentfulness there that he was left with the kids because that's all he talked about, whatever. So, their relationship... <clears throat> She the breadwinner, so they pretty she probably will be okay. Then and the man ain't gonna go on nowhere. I mean, she she's highly specialized, she's beautiful, and they got kids together. So they probably will last, okay? But it ain't no chemistry, so ain't no having no deep intimate intimacy going on. I don't see it happening. I think the intimacy is somewhere else. But anyway, second person I met was Asha. I really like Asha, honestly, and I hate to compare people, but Asha kind of compares to Quad, okay? Dramatic, you know, she's an actress, uh, you bitch, what you, what you, what do you mean? What are you talking about? What are we doing like this, okay? She's a Taurus, so she ain't gonna forgive you. She probably gonna forgive me for this video for saying it, but this is what I think. Asha has only been married two years. She says she's married to the man of her dreams. She's married to a doctor, Okay, she's an aspiring actress, meaning she ain't probably got no money, but he make the money. That's fine. I mean, with us, it, it is what it is. Okay, Asha is 39 years old. This is the one we had a conversation with with Simone about having a baby. Now, man, you ain't going to talk about Simone, but to me, Simone was not compassionate when she said this woman basically can't have no child, need to give up on it. That's what I got in the conversation. The baby going to come out with diabetes, stillborn, all this. Yeah, if you're thinking about having a baby, that's just not what I would say to people. Just like if you come in my dental office and your mouth is a certain way, I'm going to encourage you and say, hey, you know what? You got a lot going on, but you're in the right place and you get the greatest chance of getting that fixed. Like I would have told a girl, yeah, you're 39 and it will be your first child. So it may be more difficult, but more ladies are having babies at a later age. Um, They actually got a specialist for that and we can actually get you prepared to have a baby to get you ready and give you a great chance of having a normal birth childbirth. That's what I would have said. I wouldn't throw out all the statistics and all of that, whatever. My mama had me when I was 38 and hell, I think I turned out all right. Maybe not, I don't know. But then you, what they were saying was that ain't her. That wasn't her first child. I think I was my mama's fifth child, I think. She had some other babies, but anyway. 
That's a long story. Anyway, so baby, people having babies all the time. Kenya Moore just had a baby. She's 40, what, seven, something like that. Um, Everybody having babies. Y'all can compare to Janet. Janet ain't the typical, just like, you know, whatever. But people are having babies late. 39 is late. After 35, we all know it's high risk. But 39 ain't so late that you... Just give up. Anyway, now I think that's what the other doctor, Dr. Noel, was saying in a nice way. She didn't agree with what Simone was saying about having a baby. But anyway, long story short, Asha, your baby, your husband don't want no kids. I'm saying just face what it is. I mean, because he know how old you are. Trust that he's a doctor and, he's, and he actually is highly specialized. He's PM&R. He's a um, physiatrist. You want me to spell it for you, darling? I can, I can spell it for you. And the reason I know what a physiatrist is is because my husband owns a pain practice and they do chronic pain is something they do. They do uh, regenerative health, chronic pain. They work with a lot of older people. But anyway, he's highly specialized. So he, if he's not doing well, I think it's because he just started, but he will do well. Man don't have no baby. Don't want no baby. If you 39, he know 35 is high risk, right? He know you ain't got that much time. And you ain't even pregnant yet, girl. So, eh, he don't want no kids. He's talking to finances. Ain't a perfect time to have no kids. Hell, when I had my first child, y'all know I ain't trapped my man. But we was in school. We ain't had no damn money. But we were still happy that we was pregnant. Oh, well, anyway. So, the man don't want no baby. Y'all bringing up his ex. This is reality TV. You bothered. You ain't got no history with this man. You ain't got no kids with this man. And y'all newlyweds, right? And you bothered. When you bothered like that, you get an attitude with Shanique for bringing the man. Yeah, that shit was messy. Whatever. Shanique is doing her job probably. I don't know. But anyway, it was messy for her to bring that. But that was her husband's best friend. So you can kind of understand why she. Now, I wouldn't have had that shit going on trips with me and shit. That's another Tammy situation. But I don't know. Uh, Shanique got to deal with that shit. But anyway, long story short. I don't see it for Asha and Larry. I don't see that lasting. I just think that she's too bothered. It's too young in a relationship. She's too, I ain't going to use the word insecure, but that's what I get out of it. Like, she too bothered. She keep tweeting me, you know, people tweeting and texting and all of that. Talking about, oh, no, I'm not bothered by it, whatever. Yes, you are. Just like I was bothered with somebody saying receipts on my man, even though I felt like it wasn't no receipts. It bothered me. It did. It just bothered me. And it bothered me because it bothered him. But anyway, enough about that. But, um. Asha, I think that they're going to have a rough time on reality TV. So, bitch run. Bitch run. I'm going to tell you, run from reality TV. It's not good for you to look like the little man. Then show up at the thing. He seems like he's non-confrontational. Seems like a nice, great guy, physician, whatever. But if you're going to get bothered, that stuff is going to trickle back to home. And my advice for her was to not watch the show. Definitely don't let her man watch the show. Because when y'all watch the show and you see the stuff that happens on the show that actually happened and you relive it, it's a conversation that can end in an argument. And it is, it is you know, uh, reality TV is not the best place for a newlywed. And a newlywed, the husband who don't want no kids, so it ain't really. Reality TV is for somebody like me or Simone or somebody like that. And Simone had a rough time. Somebody who been married 20 plus years, got their children, um, ain't going nowhere pretty much. Even if the man probably did cheat, you ain't going. Um, going to work it out, whatever. So I wouldn't be on no reality TV show with no man I just met. I mean, not he and she just met them, but they newlyweds. And I think they got a beautiful chemistry. I do feel like they got unlike Britain. I think that they do have the chemistry, but it's going to be difficult. Marriage is already hard. Why I put reality TV in it? And you bother, and you're a Taurus. You ain't going to forgive people. I see the line of quad. Anyway, long story short. Who else is that? Jasmine. I mentioned Jasmine a little bit. Jasmine got a husband. Don't nobody know who the hell he is. And I think that's why she didn't make cast. Ain't none of my business. I don't give a damn. But they said the man is a psychiatrist, okay? Gregory Lunson with that. Psychiatrists make okay, but they don't make no big money. I'm telling you, out of the specialties that I see, the physiatrists make money. Eugene making money. He he ER that man making four four hundred thousand at least. That's good money. That I'm just not telling the business, but if you Google it, you can find how much ER docs make. A, 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 a um, psychiatrist not making that kind of money, boo. So for you to have a two uh, six million dollar house in LA. Two million dollars. Ah, we wonder, bitch, you're going to have to tell us something, okay? We don't see a man. You just had a baby. And y'all got all this money. So give us something. Say, hey, you know what? If she would have came on the show and said, listen, my da my husband came from money. His daddy died and left him a, a great inheritance that was fine. But when you leave it open, people going to make up stuff. They're going to, they're going to, um, leave it to their imagination. So I just didn't understand why she didn't say right off. Her man make this money this way. Or her man makes this money that way. Because people going to say, and I think they're going to say, y'all keep watching. 
what he do for a living. I don't know. But anyway, Jasmine and her man, I can't really give him no, no answer for them because I ain't never seen them together. I ain't never seen him. Ain't nobody seen him. Now, if you go on her page, you can see pictures of him. He, uh, he's a nice looking guy. He's snatched too. I mean, as far as like he got a good body or whatever, whatever. It seems like that. That's the L.A. life. The L.A. life, them people really working at. You know, they make you feel like you, you, you know what I mean? You need to lose some weight. I feel like I need to lose a couple pounds, go work at it, get my clothes right and stuff like that. Because they on a different level in, to me. You know what I mean? I think they think they better than us. They do. They think that we, you know, whatever. But whatever. I think that everybody got good and bad to them. And um, I've seen them in their elements. So they're trying to portray something on TV that they're not. But it will out. I'm telling you, you be on TV long enough, who you are is going to show. Anyway, so Jasmine to her. <clears throat> so who else is there? Jasmine, Asha, Dr. Imani. I think that her and her husband got a really good relationship. I think that, um, okay, I don't know how he make his money. They say he was in portrait. I, they might have had a song, maybe one hint wonder, whatever it is. But she make the money. Evidently, they say, and this is all, her mama got money from something. She owned a TV network. They were comparing her mama to Oprah, so I don't know. But anyway, they were saying her mama got money, whatever, whatever. Imani comes from money. And her husband's in Portugal, but what he do now, I don't know. They say he was a singer. I know singles. I know them. And the money ain't just rolling in. But anyway, they ain't none of my business. I don't know. But they seemed like they had a nice, healthy relationship. You know what I liked about her husband was when she said that um, she was going to try to find her father, he was like, for what? You're going to bring energy in here that don't have to be? This is your family right here. This is your family. So he seemed like a solid brother. They seemed like they have a lot of fun together. They seemed like um, she's the breadwinner, but I, I, I felt like she's a strong woman, but he wasn't bothered by her being a strong woman. So I think that that will work out. I think they'll be all right. I don't remember how long they was married, but I know she does have a little boy by somebody else, but he raised her since... The boy, since he was uh, 20 months old, I believe they said it was. Okay, so cool. Am I t okay, and now who else is it? Okay, there's Shanique and Robert, little daddy. She met him. She was, they say she was a waitress. It was, she was going to come up. Little dude is an internal medicine. He do all right. He work at urgent care. He do all right. Okay, he don't do like an ER doc, but he probably in there with a psychiatrist or whatever. He do okay. Come up for Shanique. You know, she was a waitress. She said she managed 400 properties. Uh, how you do that? I don't know. I think that people get on TV and try to make themselves seem like they're more than what they are. And she didn't seem that bright to me to be able to, like, be this businesswoman she was trying to be. I didn't like the gummy bear shit. I did not like getting in the bed with the, the, the bathtub with the gummy bear. And I felt like if she was going to give her man that kind of picture, she should have did it in private. I mean, I got some pictures here up here of me, and they kind of look provocative, but I ain't present them on TV. But it was a breast cancer awareness month, and I was going to put it out there. But no, I didn't like that. But anyway, long story short, um, she didn't get wrong. I feel like they got chemistry. Look, daddy, for her to marry this little dude, and he ain't bad looking. He ain't he just little. I think she really like him. I really do. And I love the fact that she was saying she would cater her man. Y'all know I'm, I'm old fashioned like that. And she said she was going to take care of her kids and she would never leave her kids in Florida like the other chick did. And um, she just got it on right as far as like her man. But then them little dudes, how do I know this? These little dudes um, come with expectations. So. Uh, you like I said, Napoleonic complex. This little dude, he gotta be catered to. So I like their relationship. I really feel like it was um it was genuine. I think that they really love each other. I feel like they um really had chemistry. They they really sexual look like people. I don't think they playing. I think they for real. And um I see them being together. They look like they were a team. You know what I mean? Almost like um was it Toya and uh, Eugene? They seem like a team. Like to me, I feel like he was go he's going to be in the mess. Like you know, Eugene them be trying to be, and um, he's going to support his wife no matter what. That's what I saw. So I see greatness for them. And the other chick, Noel, I didn't know nothing about her. She a family medicine doc. I didn't even see her husband and she filmed. I think that Brick, uh, what's her name, Jasmine, she didn't make the cast because her husband didn't film. I don't know if Noel's husband filmed or not, but she is a doctor. So that makes a big difference. So Noel, I ain't got nothing to say about Noel because I don't even know who the hell she is. But um, that's pretty much it. I gave you the sum up of this. I mean, the mess that they got going on is about her, Asha's husband. And they picked the right one because Asha, I ain't going to say the girl is insecure, but... She's too bothered by this. You know, I just, you know, and maybe it's a reason to be, and I don't see it yet, but the girl there, talk to the girl. You know you're on reality TV, you're supposed to turn up like, girl, hey, what's up? The girl was unbothered, you're supposed to be unbothered too, you got the ring. But anyway, long story short, that's enough about them. Now, relationships. Simone, yeah. Simone, yeah, she been mean. I, I don't know 
know what's going on. What I'm gonna have to talk to you. You know, I haven't spoken to Simone since. It's been a while. I, we, I, I don't know where our relationship is right now. Maybe we can figure it out when the season comes. But yeah, Simone being mean to me and everybody else, I feel. You know, me and her. And I can tell you more, but I'm going to leave it for the season to play out. But I think she's mad at me. Me and her husband had kind of like a Twitter battle or whatever. He said some stuff. And I feel like if you're on Twitter and you tweeting about me and you're giving your, imperking, your opinion about me, now you open the door because I've always been the one to say I don't talk to men. And it ain't that I don't talk to men. I'm not going to argue with a man. And I wasn't going to give my opinion on her husband. Because I had respect for the man. And, and probably I don't want to talk to him because something might come out my mouth wrong. But the man opened the door. He started the tweeting or whatever. And maybe he didn't mean any harm by whatever. But you know I got a click, slick, slick mouth. So if you're going to play on this bitch side, be prepared to get the repercussions of it. So, I don't know, Simone mad at me, but you know what, I'm proud of Simone, I will say that, because to me, if she stopped speaking to me about it, and you know, I ain't spoke to her since whenever, she's standing by her man, so that's kudos to her for that, but yeah, she been mean, but anyway, we ain't gonna talk about marriage medicine in Atlanta, because I really do love Simone, she's sweet, she got part of my, I mean, last year she was mean, but we gonna try to see what's going on, maybe because what I've learned is, through quiet, you never know what a person going through, you never know, Twilight went for a year, two years, her husband cheating she knew it, then she was going through physical violence, whether whoever was doing it, but we didn't know all of that so I'ma say, y'all saying Simone is mean, y'all don't know what the girl going through because I really don't either, but it's very evident that she is, but anyway relationship questions Y'all got y'all questions together because I'm going to give y'all some relationship answers and I'm going to be on off this live, baby. But make sure, because I'm saving this and I'm putting it on my YouTube channel, make sure you all go to my YouTube. I got a, a person. I'm not going to stop trying to get them to convert to Christianity. I'm not. So that kind of takes away from the relationship. Then I have a baby and then you know they want their babies to be Jewish and, and my baby Chris. I ain't. The baby going to be confused because if you really, really a Jewish person, and I'm really, really a Christian. How that's going to work? So anyway, first question would be uh, religion. Second would be probably, you know, in the early years. Probably, you know, in the early years, you know, I had three kids. But do you want children? Because to me, that question with, um, what's the name, Asha, about the kids? To me, y'all should have got that shit together a long time before y'all got married. Do he want kids? Because it look like he don't. Um, and ask those type of questions before you even... To me, the first or second date, I know people say it's wrong to ask these questions first, but don't waste my damn time, okay? If I need to know what your religion is, I need to know um, if you want to have kids, I do need your credit score. Because your credit score says a lot about you. You know what I'm saying? When people hire people, they look at their Facebook and they look at their credit score, okay? Um, look at their credit score. So their credit is important. So I'm going to ask you about your credit. I'm, if I'm serious about you, I'm going to do a background check. That's just, this is just the world of information, information age. I'm going to look there. And um, after I go through all of these things, that's the key to finding the right man. Because really, when you start out, all that is lust anyway. And that lust goes away over time. You know, you're still attracted to your man, but it's lust. But you got to get the business out first. Because if it ain't out, it ain't going to work. Okay, so get the business out. And then you can see if he can move to the next level. So that's what. That's how you find the right man. That's how you find a good man. Find out what's most important to you and make sure you ask these questions. And, you know, they lie. Men do lie, but women do lie too. Verify. Ask the questions and verify. Okay, 32 years old and I like older men. What's wrong with older men? Ain't nothing wrong with an older man. You know, my man, me and him about the same age. I think he's six months older than me. I was born in November. He's born in July. But men, uh, Men take longer to mature, y'all know that. So, if you're 32 and you're dating somebody that's 42, that'd be about right. I mean, I know a lot of ladies like to play and do the cougar thing and be 48 and marry some, and date somebody 38. To me, that's okay if you're playing. But if you're 40 and he's 30, eh, to me, everybody's different. It could work. But chances are, I go by statistics. Uh, these men don't be mature, baby. And then you want somebody to settle. Uh -uh. I like older men. I would like an older man for somebody. Not younger, if you serious. Now, if it's just a maintenance-oriented relationship, that's fine. Go with the young guy. But if you want something serious, ah, no. Yeah, background check is a must. You know we got to do that. It's too easy to get it. You can do $39, probably somewhere free. But I know it's more than $39, you're going to do a background check, okay? So, yeah, background check the man. Because people tell you any old damn thing. What's your question? 
What's a good place to meet a man? People telling me all the time, listen, I tell you young girls all the time, go to damn it school. Go to damn it school. Go to college. I'm telling you, y'all can say what you want to, I don't keep a damn. Go to college. That's where the men's at. That's where I went to, to meet my man. I'm telling you, you got to have a plan. If you're younger, now if you're 40-something, you know, college probably ain't the place to meet him. But if you're young, go to school. These boys, I mean, and shoot, my son is in college now. He's saying it's 17 to 1. Male to female, meaning it's one man to 17 women. Y'all know black women, we black. I'm black, I don't know who on here, but I'm black. Black women are leading in everything. Business, entrepreneurship, education, everything like that. And a lot of black women, Michelle Obama probably would tell you, get your education, get your stuff right before you start meeting a man. That ain't good advice, because after y'all get finished with all of this schooling and your education, your entrepreneurship, these men gonna be snatched up, baby. I'm sorry, get it while you get it. Get the man while you're getting your education, okay? The purpose of going to school is to get your education. When I always say, I always go, I went to school to get my DDS and my MRS to an MD. Come with a plan. Come with a plan to go, go to school. Go to school. So, my whole thing is a man respects you more when you have your own. I don't care what y'all say, whatever, whatever. I ain't arrogant enough. Y'all know I'm down there. A man respects you when you have your own. Keep you a damn job. Even if it's part-time, have your own income. I'm telling my daughter, everybody like that. Men are a trip. And you know, I ain't never tested with my man. I really do feel like I got a good man. But I ain't never been without a job, an income. A nice income, actually. Um... And I think my husband likes that about me. I think he respects me more because I have income. Now, everybody a little different. Some men are insecure and they don't want their wives work. Would I be that woman that with a man that's insecure so he could say, this is my shit, this is my house, and you do what I say? That wouldn't be me. That wouldn't go well for me. But go to school to meet a man. She asked me where to meet a man. You go to school to meet a man. If you're a little bit older, you go to a different place. Ah, people say the church, but I done heard horror stories about people meeting men in the church. I mean, I'm just going to be real. Y'all say go to church, but ugh. Ugh, don't think because he's in the church that he he's holier than now. I mean, I, I go to church. I mean, I think I'm a good person, but church may not be the best. I go to school, meet the man. 17 to 1, it's going to be harder, so you know you need to meet a man. There. And then half of them gay. Nothing wrong with being gay. I like gay people, but if you're looking for a man, that ain't the place to go. So make, make sure. And... Um, y'all say I'm old fashioned. The way the man heart is through his stomach. Make sure you cook, 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 cook. Learn how to cook. Quad well, got a book coming out. Live, love, laugh, and eat. Cook for the man. That's how you get the man. Y'all ask me what to meet a man. Once you meet him, bring him on home and cook for him. Steak and coochie. What? No, go ahead. Um, next question. Um, brown sugar. You got a question for me? Keep my answer short. I'm gonna keep them long as I feel like I need to keep them. I mean, you can do it how you want to do it, but um. I'm going to keep my answers as long as I want to keep them. Anybody got a, a question for me, darling? Yeah, I speak facts. I really think I'm um, right about the things that I say. I'm going to take two more questions that I'm going to lead on out of here. I've been on here for damn near an hour. Um, what's your question, baby? I didn't see that one, so bring it back. Y'all going kind of quick. Um, sex before marriage. That's a question. People always ask the same dang questions. It's the same question. Sex before marriage. Biblically, No. No, don't have no sex before man. Jackie, I don't think, I don't know if she lying or not. You know, Jackie be trying to act like she perfect. She said she didn't have no sex before marriage. I don't know. No, biblically, you should not have sex before marriage. Do people do it? Did I do it? Did your mama do it? Yeah. Did it, did it change the chances of you being with that man? It depends on the man. I think that some men are more mature than others. I think some men are just here to get it. You got to determine that for yourself. But, um... Like I say, I think a man knows right away whether your marriage material, and I don't think sex is going to make a difference in it, unless it's sex is bad. So get your sex up before you have sex with him. But biblically, I'm going to get the right answer. No, you're not supposed to have sex before marriage. Okay? Good. What's your next question? Miss Madonna, give me a question, boo. You laughing. What's going? How do you deal with a friend that's messed up, messed with your ex? A friend that messed with You know, y'all some treacherous hoes. You know what I'm saying? Y'all know the woman cold. If that's my ex, he's off limits. That's what I feel like. If he's my ex, because I, I ain't, I'm going to be honest, I ain't had that many men. I only been with, wait, wait a minute, I only been with one man, you know. But my ex is to me, if you my friend, you're not going to go for my ex. Now, if it's a love at first sight and it's something like that, come talk to me woman to woman. Come talk to me. Don't be sneaking and all of that. Say, Heavenly, we friends. 
if I'm in a relationship, I might not give a damn. I might not. But come talk to me if it's my friend, my ex, and you post, you're supposed to be my friend. The problem is I, I just don't. I think that women just treacherous and they don't give a damn. And their friendship's just not as deep. From my experiences, they just not. So these women, if they find a man that's interested in them, even if it was your ex, they're going to go for it regardless. But a true friend, if you're a trend, friend, and I feel like I'm a true friend, I would go talk to a woman, a woman. I really like this dude. Me and him hit on all, and I know he your ex. How do you feel about it? You know what I mean? I might still date him, but I'm going to tell him to be straight up, woman to woman, and talk to him. So, no, I don't think you should date an ex, but if you did, go talk to the woman. What's your question, darling? Right? Right? Bora, if you love someone, you make more money than they do, but you don't want to be the breadwinner in the relationship. What if you love someone, you make more money than him, and you don't want to be the breadwinner? <laughs> I would not dumb myself down for a relationship. I just would not. Um, if I make more money, I said this before, and I'll say it again. A lot of times, it ain't the fact that you make more money than him. It's the fact that you keep saying you make more money. Because um, there was years that I made more money than my husband. You know, when he was in residency, I made way more than he did. Um, but I didn't put it in his face. You know what I'm saying? Like, you can make more money, just be quiet. But I do feel like a man does not feel like a man if he's not paying the bills. If he's not paying the rent, at least. Pay the mortgage, um, at least. And my whole thing is if the man paying the mortgage and I'm making money and he making money too, then I take care of the other stuff and not even really speak on it. You know, I take care of the light bill, phone bill, gas, I go get, you know, pay for the vacation and really not speak on the money if I'm making more. But I think the problem with a lot of women, I ain't going to say black women, but women in general, if they make more, they keep saying it. Stop saying it. You make more money, he know it. He know. You ain't going to tell him. So be quiet about that. Just be quiet. Anyway, next question. I met a nice guy, but he has a small penis, horrible oil sex, but makes over 100000 Everything relative, because 100000 don't seem like a lot to me. It don't seem like enough to me. But everything's relative. You might think that's a lot. Um, His penis is small. The oil is bad. How important is sex to you? I don't know. You have to answer that for yourself. How important is it? Because it's really important. It ain't going to work because you're going to end up cheating. But if it ain't important, you know, you can please yourself. You know what I'm saying? If you're happy, it's a lot of things you can buy to make yourself happy. You know what I'm saying? I, you know, you can do it by yourself. But anyway, it depends. Because sometimes you, you might really like this dude who got a small penis. But to me, I, I ain't never seen no pinky sized penis. Like somebody was saying somebody hood back. I don't believe that. I don't. I think that you, you could work with it, girl. Work with it. If it's small, work with it. Work with it. Find something. Get some toys and play with it. Candy got a whole line of toys. Play with the toys. Get the toys and work with it if you like them. If he if he doing everything else right. I think sex is important, I do. But um, is it the most important thing to some people? Um, Play with it. Work with it. Work with it and see. But if you really like him, try to work with it and see what it happens. But, um, yeah. Don't cheat on him, though. Okay? What's the question? She said something about married to medicine. Let's see. Where is this going at? Uh, who is the freakish you think on married to medicine? I think Jackie Freaky. I really just do. I think that she is. Um, everybody gonna say I'm wrong, but I really do think Jackie's freaky. I think the people that talk about it all the time is probably the people that's not getting it. And you know I be talking about it. I think the people that talk about money all the time is the problem. People that have a problem with money. The people that have talk about sex all the time, probably the people that have a problem. That don't be having a whole lot of sex. I think people talk about things that they, they have a problem with. So, freaky, Jackie. That's my answer. Okay? How do I let my husband know that he needs to surprise me more with things? You know, you're talking about the five love languages, right? You like to be surprised with things. You like gifts, honey. Tell him. Tell him. Men don't take subtle hints. They're not that bright. I'm going to just let you know. I'm being real. You know, you can say what you want to. Men ain't that bright. You're going to have to tell a boo. Listen, baby. And tell him in the right context. Like, you know, after sex, say, hey. Maybe you know what? I like, tell him. He ain't going to get it. Don't drop no hints. You're going to have to write it down, take a picture, and show him and tell him. Because he's not going to get it. So the way to deal with men is you got to be, you got to tell him. But try to get your tone right. Don't have no attitude like he missed Valentine's Day and you come in with an attitude. No, tell him, like, baby, you know what I really like? I have to say so he in a good mood. Put him some cake or something, a chocolate cake or something, and then tell him when he in a good mood. I like to be surprised with gifts. Just throw it out there. If you don't catch it the first time, throw it again. Sometimes he's slow. You got to throw it more than one time. But tell him what you want. Tell him. That's the answer. Men are not that bright. No, they're not. You know this, right? 
Who is that? Y'all know I'm not lying. Should a couple have joint savings and checking or separate? Um, I think the man's money needs to be spoken for. I think that they should be joint with the man money, but I think the woman should have something on the side. That's just me and maybe I'm wrong, but I'm telling you what I think. You asked me what I think. I think that we need to know where this man money is going. We need to know if he in a business, we need to have access to the business account. We need to have joint checking, all of that joint savings. We need to be saving in our 401k, the kids, the 529, the IRAs, everything that's tax deductible or tax deferred, get that out of the way and save it, okay? We have an automatic savings plan that's coming directly out of your joint checking account. We save it for retirement. We save it for a bad rainy day and get insurance, baby, disability, life insurance, all of that. Make sure you insure it up. Anyway. Keep his money. His money should be joint. Everything he got, we need to know what it is. But, ladies, 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 keep you in this thing of your own. He don't got to know what maybe he could know. I don't know. But keep your own. I'm sorry. Am I wrong? I don't know. If y'all men on here don't listen to me. But I'm telling you, women, keep you something else. Because it's been too many times that these men just ain't. Mm. But anyway, I ain't shady. I'm telling you the truth. Nah. Keep your darn. Keep your separate account. But keep his with you. Does paycheck cheating work? I don't know what that means, paycheck cheating. I don't know what that means. Um, I think the man's heart is <laughs> his heart is where his money is. And if he ain't spending no money on you, he ain't you ain't got his heart. That's what I think. I just love you. I'm creep me a creep me a trick. Cause I'm taking facts. Ask me, I'm a relationship expert. But this thing degree, I got this degree here. I mean this certification. It ain't no degree. A certification for Jackie them, cause they always want a piece of paper. Relationships ain't hard. It's common damn sense. That's what it is. And I'll tell you what to do if you want to do the right thing or you want to be dumb out there and do the wrong thing. So ask me the relationship question. I'm trying to help y'all, really. And I'm going to tell you again, it's my book out here. This actually is a really good book because I actually interviewed five different women from different lifestyles, different backgrounds, in different relationship positions and got their feedback on what they thought and told them exactly what I thought. So check this book out, The Business of Love, baby. Y'all know I'm a best-selling co-author. I, I don't even be putting that out there. I'm a best-selling co-author. This is my third, fourth book. This is my fourth book. I got a business book out there called Have Dr. Heavenly's Business Prescriptions. That's one of my favorite books. Then I got a weight loss book. Then, you know, I lost 70 pounds. I got a fitness prescriptions book. Um, the book that I co-authored was called Wake Up, Live the Life You Love. It's actually an inspirational book, and I give my testimony a lot of things that I've done. But this is my latest book, and this is the book I'm most proud of, The Business of Love, because it's giving you relationship advice one-on-one. How to find a man, how to keep a man. Check it out. All right. Please support my book. Yes, um, go to my website, drheavenly.com. If you go to Amazon or iBook or Mac, whatever, download the book. It's there because we went through Book Baby. Okay? You said you're a chronic what? Let me see. Let me go. I'm a chronic pain. Worried about having a relationship. Girl, go to Dr. Damon. He's a chronic pain doc. Roswell pain specialist get you out of pain, baby. Um, he does not. He's not the one to go for them pain pills. He's procedure based practice. So go on and get you your procedures to get you out of pain, baby. Then talk about a relationship. We can't even think about a relationship when we hurting. If you're in a relationship and you found out he had cancer, should you stay? Dang, I ain't got that kind of question before. Not that. I always say everything's relative. How long have you been in a relationship? If it's been 22 years and y'all been together and the man turned up, don't be the man. You can't be the man like that. That would just not be good juju. It's just not good. You just not, you're not going to be blessed for doing that. You've been a man all this long time, 22 years, and you got cancer. Do not leave him. But now we've been together seven months. Do I want to take all them problems on? Mm-mm, 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 mm-mm. And I would tell him, you know, straight up, you know. You got cancer, you know. I ain't willing to go through this with you. So it depends on how deep the relationship is, really. But uh, 22 years and you've been married to him and you've been married to him, you can't leave. But if you say, nah, I'm not going to give my life to a man because he got cancer. I feel bad, but I can't. If we, if I felt like it wasn't that deep, no. I ain't going to do it. Hey, this lady says she's 43. She's been divorced for five years, ready to date again. However, it's hard to find a man and how to date. How do I set myself up? You know, that's the question of the century. Because people at 40, 43, that's when they get divorced. People say, I get married, what, 25, 27, 28, whatever, maybe earlier. At 40, that's when the people leave. You know, that's when they're getting divorced. So she's not in that by herself. Um, Honestly, you know, I had a dating app. It kind of was a lot. So, um... 
I think online dating is the way to go. That's the easy way to kind of get the the uh, questions out of the way without being rude because you actually online. Don't meet the man at your house. Take him to an open spot. I mean, shoot, it's just as safe as anything else. Don't give the people too much information. Um, meet him at a public place. Don't go to dinner with the man. Go to lunch because, you know, if you don't like him, you know, lunch is just an hour or 30 minutes depending on where you work. Meet the man. See if you like him. Don't go to dinner because dinner's too suggestive. Um, but I would say online dating. Online. Hell, it's a lot of people on a lot of people online trying to have sex. But you know what? I feel like men are. I told you they not, they bright, but I think they straightforward. So if you ask them, a lot of times at a certain age, they're going to tell you what they want. So you say, hey, you know what? Are you just looking for a hookup? Are you looking for a relationship? And a lot of them will say, eh, we're going to see what happens. But you can kind of tell by their mannerisms what they kind of into. But if you ask me at 43 if, how you should look for a man or where you should, I say online dating at that point. Because you get a plethora of men and you can get sift through them real quick. Um, you know, I talked about religion. I talked about um your credit score. You can ask them questions and you don't really know them so they ain't offended. And if they offended, they ain't the man for you. So, online dating. What else? Um, 30, going to school, too late to start a family. Wait a minute, what? And find love. No, girl. 30 is very young. Come on now, I ain't got but 12 minutes remaining. Look, they gonna cut me off in, in 9 seconds. Listen, so I gotta end. No, 30's not young. It's people that are 50 and 60 looking for a man. But guys, please like, follow, and subscribe to my YouTube channel. And it's been great.